This show happens because of Web Central, creators of beautifully effective websites for small businesses. You can grab an exclusive listener deal over at webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo. And we're made possible by Design Crowd, the world's number one custom design marketplace where you can get a design you love guaranteed or your money cheerfully refunded. There's an exclusive VIP offer waiting for you over at designcrowd.com forward slash, you guessed it, Timbo. I remember my days working for Australia's biggest travel agent. I absolutely dreaded wearing their corporate uniform. I felt like such a dag. Polyester shirt, navy slacks. In fact, I think the tie was even on a bit of elastic. Where was today's guest when I needed her? She runs a very disruptive uniform business that even Gwyneth Paltrow loves. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show. A successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to another episode of of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, which is Australia's number one marketing podcast. I'm your host, Timbo Reid, but you, infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you are ready, I hope you're ready, to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Welcome back if you're a long-time listener, love your work. If you're new, stick around. You are going to have some fun and build your business at the same time if you implement what you hear in the show. Hey, big show today, another disruptive marketer, Felicity Rogers of the modern uniform business Cargo Crew. She joins us to explain, amongst other things, how Gwyneth Paltrow came to wearing one of her uniforms. I've got some feedback from a listener who's been inspired to create a podcast herself And we revisit a past episode in which Australia's voice of online retailing shared some absolute gold. Speaking of gold, there's absolute marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. So coming up, disruptive marketer Felicity Rogers of Cargo Crew. But first, a quick check-in team. Now, I was going to do an episode this week uh, overviewing the OzPod podcasting conference that I attended recently, but I left my notebook in the plane the other day. (laughs) Oh, there was some good stuff in it. Not only great notes, but contacts that I'd made. Anyway, I've put a call through to Qantas. They're looking for it. Gee, I hope I find it. And I can do that episode uh, down the track for you. Hey, um, big thank you to all four members. I just want to... Big hug to all my four members. You know, the discussions we're having around growing each other's business through smart marketing are nothing short of inspiring. So thank you to each and every one of you that are a member of the Small Business Big Marketing Forum. And if you're not, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and you can join up. Uh, Within a couple of minutes, you'll be in there and uh, myself and other motivated business owners will be answering your marketing conundrums. And there is still time to book a seat on my Philippines tour in November. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash tour. Righto, enough of that. On with the show. Now, I met today's guest, Felicity Rogers of Cargo Crew, a couple of months ago at the Telstra Business Awards, where I happened to be the MC. And in fact, a year before, Cargo Crew won the National Small Business Award, which is no mean feat. So what's Cargo Crew, I hear you ask? Well, as Felicity says, she's building a brand that crews, that's her funky word for workers or employees, around the world love to wear. She goes on to say that Cargo Crew creates original design-led uniforms. They sure do. They're very funky. They're very cool. That enhance and complement a business's visual identity and brand language, hey? That sounds complicated, but trust me, all will be explained. Now, Cargo Crew exports to over 30 countries with 12,000 crews around the world wearing their uniforms. Uh, Their clients include Renault, Hoyts, Freedom Furniture, that groovy coffee roaster Seven Seeds, and as I said at the start, even Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop skincare business wears Felicity's aprons. 
Listen in. Felicity is going to share the power of a good corporate uniform, why your business's visual language is important, how she got a massive international contract by advertising in a tiny little magazine, how Gwyneth Paltrow came to wear her uniform, plus we talk pricing, photography, retail versus online. I've got to tell you, team, there is so much marketing goodness in this chat. It's unbelievable. And by the way, during this interview, Felicity forgot to tell us about another big win she had recently, which I will share after the interview. Now, Felicity has some pretty young things modelling her uniforms on the Cargo Crew website, but many of them look a little forlorn. So I started off by asking Felicity, why do fashion models always look so sad? Um, that is a very interesting question. Um, look, to be honest, I think they get the direction from um, the photographer and the art director for the job that they're working on. Um, so essentially, if the designer or the brand wants attitude and you know a solemn look, then that's um, then that's what they do. Well, clearly, they often want attitude and <laughs> solemn looks. You're not as guilty as Spell and the Gypsy Collective. You have some Thank happy you. photos, but I'm yeah. going to say, you know, there there is there are some solemn ones and. You know, the guys are wearing really nice clothes. But anyway... That's very interesting that you mentioned that because we actually had to do a presentation um, a couple of weeks ago when we did this um, ANZ growth program um, Mm -hmm. that they're putting us through. We had to do a presentation to to the panel and the audience, um, which were um, co-business owners. And one of them said, everything, all your imagery is so happy and engaging. And then this new image that you've got up on the screen at the time, which was the modern uniform, is more solemn and serious. And they don't look as happy and, and they really noticed that. And I said, oh, it's funny because we were trying to make a point around distinguishing the new direction of, mm-hmm. I guess, the slightly more, you know, corporate. Well, everything you do, yeah. I mean, it's interesting, everything you do is disruptive. So yeah. if, if, you know, people general... Are people are talking, get people talking. Why are they doing that? Exactly <laughs> right. But it's yeah. like, you know, why go down the path of all this solemn photography, which you're not. I mean, there's some really right. nice shots. And I want to talk more about photography later because it clearly sure. is a is a is what I'd call a, a critical marketing success factor in your business. But... Oh, I would totally agree. What's your elevator pitch, Felicity, when someone asks, what is Cargo Crew? So basically, we are the modern uniform. Um, we nice. design and pro- we design and produce uniforms that staff want to wear. Um, and we we believe, you know, a uniform is not only about the practical elements of staff being noticed and identified, um, but you know, really extending a business or brand's visual identity. Nice, because clearly at some point four years ago we, when you started the business, you said to yourself, gee, there's some pretty crook corporate uniforms out there. Absolutely. I actually started the business 14 years ago. Ooh, hello. <laughs> um, but Cargo Crew as a brand yeah, we launched right. four years ago. So basically um, when I did start the business um, 14 years ago, um, the focus was around um, designing, you know, fashionable uniforms for corporates. Even and then? Yeah, everything that we did at the, um, was was designed to a brief, designed and produced to a brief. So um, I guess to kind of flip back, you know, further to my background, um, I did study fashion at RMIT mm-hmm. and, um, <clears throat> and I had one year of working in fashion PR after I graduated and I always knew that I wanted to have my own business and I really wanted to get a fashion label up and running. Um, so I started that a year after I graduated with a... Um, a, you know, a friend from uni. And um, we did that for five years. So during that time, you know, the Melbourne Fashion Festival was launched. We were part of the Young Designer Parade set. Um, we used to get, a, you know, a lot of PR. It was before online, really, before the internet. So, you know, orders would be faxed and we'd have to, Love it. Um, you know, ring up and um, make appointments. There was no promotion on social media. Um, so whilst we, you know, I think we had a great little business, we literally made no money and never got paid. Um so not, but it was during... not, not really a great little business. <laughs> great business from a creative perspective. Yeah, okay. So just just stop there. Take a breath. Yeah. Because yeah. there obviously is... A, I mean, interesting that you went through fashion school, you were a yeah. designer, but you must have quite the entrepreneurial mindset because it would be way too seductive if you didn't to just get into, and I'm using quote marks, fashion, Mm. you know, designing stuff that, you know, there's not a market for, many people don't want to buy, it's it's seasonal, whereas you have 
yep. 14 years ago, where the word disruptive felicity, I'm not sure it existed in the business lexicon. <laughs> you've gone, you've gone, there's this industry that's just kind yes. of doing my head in with bone slacks and, yes. you know, um, blouses and, yes. and these are things that people are wearing to work. Yeah. So I totally agree. I think I definitely have always had the entrepreneurial mindset, but I've also just really loved the marketing side of business. Ah. So I think the combination of um, designing clothing and then realizing how they can, you know, benefit um, from a marketing perspective and a brand's image, to me, I, it just relates. Um, so, you know, when we were doing the label, we, we got approached by a couple of businesses um, to design their uniforms. And that's what triggered triggered the idea because I actually enjoyed the process of getting a brief from a client. Okay, this is what we want to, this is what how we want our staff to look. How can we do that through our uniforms? Um, so that was the start of the process of me thinking this is, you know, something I really enjoy. So, so am I right in saying that for the first 10 years, you're making bespoke corporate uniforms, which are Correct. nice, but you're just in that, you're in that bespoke space. In Four Correct. years ago, you've yes. gone light bulb, we're yep. going to have our own corporate uniform brand called Correct. Cargo Crew. Is that what happened? That's that's exactly right. So basically, you know, over the years of making bespoke uniforms, listening to clients, understanding the process of how clunky it is to get a brief, you know, design something from scratch, um, make samples, test and produce, and then um, produce the orders and then have to reorder constantly with the minimum quantities and, you know, long lead times. The whole process was just extremely cost, cost um, you mm. know, extremely high cost. Cost um, prohibitive. And high, cost prohibitive, exactly. And, um, and so I think through the years of doing, you know, bespoke work, I really got to understand what our customers want and need. And the idea came, you know, um, from myself and also my sister who joined me in the business six years ago mm -hmm. to actually create a range that people can order from stock that's available. There's no minimum reorder quantities and it's the product that we know that they want to wear. So it's taking all of that experience along with, you know, my fashion design abilities and putting that into a really easy work workable product range um, hmm. for people to be able to procure. So it's definitely, um, I think, has set us apart in the market. Um, the other, I think, thing that's different about it is that we don't have resellers. So we basically produce a high-quality product and sell direct to our market at wholesale prices, um, whereas a lot of the big um, uniform brands in the industry really distribute through reselling networks. So, you've got no, so you're selling online. Mm -hmm. yes. you've, you've got a retail store in very groovy Brunswick, Melbourne, uh, inner city yep. kind of bohemian chic suburb <laughs> of Melbourne, <laughs> yes, which, by the way, rents wouldn't be cheap there. I want to talk about that. So, yep. um, so they're, they're your two distribution channels, right, online and yep. retail. That's correct. Okay. Um, and, and, and obviously online, where, how long ago did retail come along? Well, to be honest, um, we moved to Brunswick um, two years ago from Collingwood. So um, when we made that move to a, a much bigger um, premises, we were able to build, um, yeah, more like a retail showroom. So that was about two years ago that right. we really started promoting that, that people can come here and, you know, have styling advice and, you know, try on and, and you know, get kitted out for their what, uniforms. What was the – okay, well, there's one upside from having all, all of a sudden um, the ability to walk in off the street um mm -hmm. what other how much of a business impact did it have having that shop front um i think for the local melbourne market it's great because you know at the end of the day people always prefer to actually touch and feel the product yeah, and they see do, the don't they? themselves um but you know again that's quite limiting to just have that in melbourne yeah. so we still obviously need to have um the other avenues of how we can engage with our customers you know interstate and also overseas so um you know in practical kind of form we just offer a very easy process for samples to be purchased and easily returned and refunded so that people do have the opportunity to feel confident in what they're purchasing um, and if they're not happy then you know they can return it and, and we refund can we yeah. just explore that it's so important you know so many businesses make it hard yeah. um, for people to give them money they make yeah. it hard to return they make it hard to do business is, is, do you have this kind of philosophy at cargo yeah. crew of ease across Absolutely. everything Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, our absolute overarching focus is is client service, um, because my sister, as I mentioned, joined me in the business um, in two thousand and eight, and her background was um, advertising. So she really brought that kind of client service expertise to the business. And it, was and she a suit in an advertising agency? <laughs> um, I was. was. <laughs> 
I remember you you mentioned yeah. that. Yes. So you know all about climate I do. Service. I'm bending um, over backwards. Yeah, Be- absolutely. Yeah. And I think it just makes such a difference because if you not only have a great product and a great offering, if you can deliver that product in a way that's memorable for customers and it's a consistent service and the support is there, then really to us it's not just about you know, it's not just about the product. It's about the experience of buying from Cargo Crew. Um, So we definitely do focus on making it easy for customers. And we also understand that, you know, we're limited with being a small business, how we can get our product out there for customers to, you know, to view before they make the big decision of investing in a new Mm -hmm. uniform. So, of course, we have to really focus on making that process easy. We offer a digital styling advice. So we will um, take a brief from the client, you know, what are they looking for? And we'll help put looks together for them um, in a presentation format and, um, you know, we'll either email that to them if they're, um, you know, interstate or overseas. So there's a lot of communication. How, and how does that, I'm just looking at that now, that's on your website, that's uniform yep. styling, is that right? Correct. We, yep. So yep. how does digital styling advice work? Because this is interesting, all of a sudden you are making, well, you're selling a tangible product, but it's online, yep. so it's kind of intangible because I can't hold it. And, Correct. you know, uh, you know, if I was buying stuff, Felicity, I can't match my, I don't know whether to match my socks with my shoes or my pants <laughs> or my belt, so like I'm in trouble here. <laughs> So how Absolutely. are you going to – you're probably not going to work with someone like me. but, but. <laughs> I think it's just being confident in um, in our range and listening to what the client um, tells you, you know, like, okay, this is, our, this is our venue or this is our business, you know, these are the kind of staff that we have and this is the kind of task that they're doing. So I guess us knowing our range as we do um, and our team being, you know, um, well-trained in product and, um, and style – then it's about educating the customer. You know, if you choose, you know, this shirt, then it will definitely be, you know, cooler for your staff to wear and that coordinated with, you know, this apron or this chino pants can give you that resort look that you're after. It's really about guiding the customer through the range and um, and putting looks together that, you know, that listens to their brief. Resort look sounds a bit 90s. Oh, no, no. A bit resort love boat. Very- <laughs> no, no, resort. You can still rock the resort. Can you rock you. the resort? Absolutely. I didn't think absolutely. you could. I thought the leisure suit was kind of it was gone. Maybe it's making a comeback. Hey, have you been to Palm Beach right, um, lately? Oh, I haven't. <laughs> they, they do it well. They do do it they well. do? Okay, all right. Yeah. So tell me, uh, this is a, a general question, but um, yeah. when you, you, what you t- touched on then was the idea of briefing and extracting mm-hmm. a brief from the client that mm-hmm. means that you can deliver the best design result possible, right? So that works across, I know you just do uniforms, but I've got listeners who are briefing in logos, websites, brochures, book covers, signage. What is the key to a small business owner who doesn't understand this concept of briefing and the need for an import, you know, getting it right? Yeah. What, What do you say to them in terms of the kind of how do you brief a creative person? I think you just need to be really clear about who you're talking to as your audience and 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 how do you want to be portrayed as far as, you know, is your is your visual language about being super simple and super sleek and not, you know, not being too bold and too too loud, but if you do want to be about bold and loud, then you need to be explaining that to your creative and saying we really want to make an impact with what we're putting together here. Okay. So I think I think it's really important that you can visualize how you see your identity in the way that you communicate to your audience um, and then be consistent with that. I think that is the number one key. I think you nailed it. Getting yeah. getting clear on who you are selling to. And I always right. say, you know, we talk a lot about this inside my forum where it's like you, you – it's not just about the demographics, right? No. I mean, age, sex, income, location, that's not that interesting. That doesn't tell a creative person that much mm. about the, the people you're selling to. But once you get – what problems have these people got, you know? Yep. What do they think about your brand, about your industry? What other brands do they love? These are questions I would imagine that if you knew – it's going to give you the opportunity to deliver a better outcome. I agree. And it's also just really, you know, understanding the essence of your brand and um, and how you can make that desirable to your to your customer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, being confident with that. Um, so, being consistent. Yeah. so you're starting, you've got your own brand. Um, yeah. Things are starting to rock. You're 14, mm-hmm. you're 14 years old now, uh, the, yeah. bus- the business anyway. You're 16. Overnight you're 16. Success. Yeah, overnight success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what um, was it? Tell me about that moment where you've looked at Sister Narelle. Hubby's in the yep. business too, isn't he? Yeah, he, um, we're, oops, we're, I just dropped my earphone. Don't Sorry. drop your earphone. Um, <laughs> tell me about the moment when you've looked at each other and gone, yep, we're nailing it. 
<laughs> well, I mean, that is absolutely an ongoing, um, an ongoing, um, I guess, situation to be in. Um, so, yeah, my husband, Paul, he joined the business three years ago. Um, he was always behind the scenes, you know, helping us with ITs and systems and all the mm-hmm. practical things that are running a business. Um, but I guess whilst... You come know, on, there must have been a moment when you got a big there, order or whether... Come on, what? what? Um, I think it's a combination of things. Like um, I think it's a combination of, one, when the, when the online part of the business really started to take off mm-hmm. and seeing that you'd wake up in the morning and there was, there was orders from overnight and we started to... You know, started to say, "Wow, this is really, nice really feeling. working." Yeah, that was a great feeling. Um, but I guess you know what it is like. The more successful your business is, and the more it grows, then the more challenges that come, you know, that come with that. As yeah. far as understanding how to, the business has to run, what systems need to be implemented to support that. So it's for us, it's it's recognizing the success, but it's also you know figuring out what's next to keep that going and to keep you know to keep moving ahead and to keep ahead of our competitors. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but as far as the um, the light bulb moment, it was funny because when we first um, you know decided to set up the digital part of the business and, and the online store, we have a long term relationship with our um, local embroiderer in Collingwood, and he does a lot of work for all the uniform businesses in Melbourne, and he said to me at the time. After we'd been working like day and night, weekends, getting the website website built, doing a lot of the uploading of the images and everything ourselves, mm-hmm. um, he said to me, Felicity, this is never going to work. I've had other clients that have tried it and they, selling uniforms online just doesn't work. And um, and I'll never forget that because at the time I remember it was very close to launch and I was like, oh, I can't believe that we're going, you know, spending all this time and money mm-hmm. and, you know, he's saying, you know, he's had people and it just doesn't work. So we proved him wrong and, and that is, I think, for me the um, – you know, that moment of going, I know that this works now online, having the, you know, the uniform business online does work. And the reason it works is, the, you know, is because of the way that we're communicating to our customers, you know, the visual language that we're using with our own photography mm-hmm. and our own, um, you know, storytelling, sharing the stories of our, of our clients, um, showing people this is how a uniform can be. Um, and then obviously to top that off, you know, the focus on our, um, on our product, which we, you know, spend a lot of time and love putting innovation in designing original product. Yeah, love it. And and how is that embroiderer in Collingwood still embroidering for you? <laughs> he is, absolutely. <laughs> Good on him. Has he eaten humble this. pie? <laughs> oh, no, he would never admit it. Oh, he would okay. Remember it. But, you know, for me, it was definitely a defining moment. I want to talk marketing <laughs> with you in a minute, but just tell us, wrap some numbers around where Cargo Crew's at now. Can you talk about turnover, number of staff, SKUs, website traffic? What? Just give us a sense. Um, okay, so as far as staff numbers, so um, in the last, yeah, so from four years ago, we've grown from four people to 22 people. How fantastic. Um, so we, we have, you know, a great size crew um, on board now. And, um, yeah, we don't actually disclose turnover as such being a private business. No one listening, as- Felicity, just uh, you and me. <laughs> But as far as um, sales growth, um, yeah, the past two years we've seen, um, you know, 80% growth um, and particularly in the last 12 months, um, you know, the online sales growth has been around 40%. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, they're big numbers to um, to grow and obviously um, with that comes a lot of extra investment in stock Yep. Um, because at the end of the day our offering is that our product is available from stock. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, as our range grows, um, as far as SKUs, we have around um, 110 styles now. So we've grown from um, four aprons when we first launched, four denim aprons, um, to now being, yeah, 110 styles. So nice. um, as far as growth within four years on styles, that's um, pretty significant, I would say. Love it. Hey, listeners, I'm talking to Felicity Rogers, who is the founder of Corporate Uniform. A very cool corporate uniform business cargo crew. Now, Felicity, let's talk marketing. After all, this yep. is the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Love that. Now, I've got quite a few little kind of areas I want to cover. Let's start sure. with your website because mm-hmm. you've got a great – it's a great user interface. The visual mm-hmm. language on it, even the written language on it, um, is it's very clear and it makes you want to click. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think that was an accident. You put a lot of work into that, Right. 
Absolutely. Um, you know, and again, I wouldn't say it's all, you know, totally contrived because I feel like a lot of that does come naturally to us. Like mm-hmm. we are extremely passionate about what we're doing. So yeah, the language that we're using is really just us talking directly to our customer. This is what's good about it. This is how you can wear it. It's, you know, I think it's, it, we're relating to our customer mm-hmm. um, on that level. Um, the visual, the visual language, absolutely, we do put um, a lot of effort and work into around how we're presenting our product. Um, and you know, when we first started, direct marketing was probably the one thing that we focused on a lot because it's something that we could afford um, at the time. So investing in you know beautiful photography and then using those images and directly you know targeting. Um, hospitality groups, Mm -hmm. um, venues and things like that to get that brand awareness. You know, this was obviously whilst our SEO was growing, people obviously don't just, you don't just launch a website and people find you. Mm. Um, So Many many think they do. Yeah, no, (laughs) absolutely not. I mean, that's a whole different strategy around people finding you online. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so I think initially that um, communication and I think the strength behind our visual language was really important to introduce our brand um, to our market. And when you talk about visual language, I mean, you're not just talking about photography, are you? What What else are you referring to? I think it's everything from you know the models that you choose to their um, to their expressions, engagement, mm-hmm. like you mentioned before about the the solemn versus you know smiling faces. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's how the product styled and and how that is um, you know accessorized, and it's putting things into context. Like one one outfit look presented one way could could also work for a business you know, say a retail Mm -hmm. environment versus a um, hospitality venue. The same look could work if it was styled and presented differently. Yeah. So the visual language is definitely a a communication tool for us. So so just with the website though, do you you have obviously, do you have someone internally who's managing that full time or you have a web design agency? So it's a combination. Um, We recently, um, just at the end of last year, actually, we employed a digital um, publisher Mm -hmm. who works in the business full time in the office. Um, So she works alongside our digital agency, um, keeping them in check. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and then we also have a consultant who's basically worked with us from the start, who um, focuses more so on our um, SEO and AdWord campaigns. Mm -hmm. Um, So she analyzes our analytics, um, see what's working, you know, see where the traffic's, um, you know, coming from, um, the most, you know, the most time people are spending on the site, what are they reading, what's working, what's what's pushing. So she's really, you know, focusing on on those kind of analytics um, and then feeds back to us what we need to be doing more. Um, and what we, you know, what, where we need to be putting our money. Can you give from an there. example of where she's come in and gone. You're not going to believe this. We've just had a thousand hits on a particular product or something. Yeah, where where does she well, you know, really come into what's her What's really interesting? What's really interesting is like the the pages, the content pages where we're giving advice and offering, for example, styling advice or uniform um, tips to know, those kind of pages, um, they rank very highly. So people are really looking for that guidance. Um, And, you know, to... That's helpful um, marketing. Absolutely. And then, on you know, on the flip side of that, when we um, recently dressed Gwyneth Paltrow in um, in New York, which can tell you the story a little bit later, but, mm-hmm. you know, I would have assumed that from that, the, the apron that she was wearing would become a bestseller. Mm-hmm. Um, so whilst, um, you know, whilst the actual publicity, I think, of um, dressing Gwyneth absolutely helps to build the brand, the apron itself, it didn't become like a, our number one seller. Interesting. Um, yeah, isn't it? So I think you know, whilst traffic can be driven from different um, from different sources, it's that's why I think it's really important to keep a focus on you know having an expert focusing on those analytics yeah, totally. and really understanding. Yeah. So so just and we, I want to get to Gwyneth very shortly, but tell me in terms of those pages that are ranking really well, what you mm-hmm. mean by that is it's not necessarily a particular product page; it's a page where you explain the answer to what would be maybe a frequently asked question. Is that right? I would say yes. So basically, I think, it's, again, it's a combination, but I guess what I'm saying is it's not just about the number one product. Like mm. we definitely have key products in our range that rank the highest as far as, you know, our number one selling aprons, those pages, 
are the ones that constantly get clicked on. Mm -hmm. But I think to support that, you can't just rely on the product pages driving the traffic and keeping people on the site for a longer time because I guess the longer that people stay on your site and the more they explore it, then all that does is help increase your SEO. So if you can have the content pages that are removed from, you know, the product focus and they give, you know, insightful information that um, talks to your customers, then, you are then you know, the people are staying on your site longer and that is, you know, is a really great, um, a really great key to building, to building your ranking. Let's talk celebrity endorsement. Gwyneth Paltrow yes. donned one of your aprons. How did all that come about? Um, so that is the power of the internet. <laughs> Um, so basically we got, um, approached just before Christmas last year from a, um, agency in America, sent us an email, you know, we're doing a pop-up in New York. We'd like to buy 50 of your aprons. Could you get them to us within two weeks? We replied, yep, no problem. They're in stock. They can be, you know, dispatched in the next two days. Um, so off the order went and they were lovely to deal with. They didn't disclose at the time who the pop-up was for. <laughs> Um, we came back from our Christmas break um, in January and um, we had a new um, focus for the for our team just to, you know, communicating with them. Any downtime anyone has, jump on social media, go through and look for any of our products that have been photographed that we, you know, may not have been tagged in. Um, <laughs> And so we called it the content hunt. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and this kind of thing obviously, again, makes our job easier for communicating to our, um, you know, our own customers yeah. and our social channel, always looking for new content. Um, and so one of the guys here, um, she was looking through Instagram and saw a photo of, of, of our apron at the Goop pop-up in New York. So Goop is obviously Gwyneth Paltrow's business. Um, so she shared it with the team and we were like, wow, that's what my, that order must have been, you know, that we sent out just before oh. Christmas. So then what happened was I started searching on Goop and I was looking for more images. I couldn't find anything. And then I searched hashtag Goop Market. And what came up was a photo of one of the staff standing next to Gwyneth. So Gwyneth had her, um, yeah, was standing next to the staff member wearing the apron. And I was like, wow, that is such an amazing image. So we shared that on our social um, channels. We put that on Instagram and we tagged Gwyneth. Mm-hmm. And um, and surprisingly, she, um, you know, the comment that we made was, you know, we had no idea how amazing we, we dressed the, um, the staff at Gwyneth's Goop pop-up. She actually replied to that um, post herself and wrote, I loved them. Good so on. if you if you can imagine the you know the excitement yeah. in the office when that happened, um, so then following on from that, I actually emailed Goop and I said um, you know just wanted to introduce myself you know we're business in obviously Australia and we had you know no idea that we'd um, dressed you guys and you know thank you for this amazing opportunity and um, yeah so basically then what happened was um, they emailed me back the next day saying funny that you've touched base with us um, because, you know, considering that was probably like almost six to eight weeks ago, the event mm. from when I, from when we found out and then touched base with them. And they said, um, Gwyneth actually asked if we can you know, for us to contact you um, to see if you'd be interested in um, producing aprons for the launch of the Goop Beauty brand in March. So that's when we then supplied um, more aprons and one for Gwyneth to actually wear at the launch. And um, and then she also gifted them to all the people attending. The what event. a great so, story! And what permission yeah. do you have to use Gwyneth Gwyneth's um, uh, endorsement? Yeah, so basically, it's technically not Gwyneth; it's Goop. Um, mm-hmm. So we're allowed. We've purchased the images um, that we use on our site of her wearing our apron, mm-hmm. um, and we're allowed to use those um, for any editorial PR opportunity, um, as well as on our site. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've also, um, I guess, another marketing tool which going into um, is something we do each year. It's a publication called the Crew Review. And it's a, it's a newspaper style catalog that we produce each year. Um, and it kind of, you know, um, showcases our clients, showcases our new products. Um, you know, we interview customers and, um, basically within that this year, we've also, um, used the image as a full page in that. Um, and we, you know, we're able to, we're allowed to do that. So that's very old school of you to have a newspaper style catalog. I know. Do How many do you print? Where do they go? Where, where did they go to? Well, basically, we did it for the first time last year, um, and we we produced around five thousand copies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what we did with that, we we used that besides our online, you know, marketing that we focus on consistently and um, you know constantly. Um, the crew review was basically, I guess, our number one offline communication tool. 
Um, so basically what we did with that is we targeted um, businesses around the country um, by um, either um, region or industry and we called it the um, the race around Australia. So our client care team would all be given, you know, either a region or um, an industry each week to focus on to research businesses and then to send them a copy of the career review to Brilliant. introduce our business. Um, so we, you know, like the thing with the offline marketing like this, it is it's harder to track to to understand, I guess, the mm-hmm. investment um, and the result from that. Um, compared with online, where you can really um, you can really track the analytics. So, like as I said last year, I think we printed around five thousand. The cost to send them is actually ex- you know it's obviously expensive. Like it was around three dollars a um, an envelope to send. And when you're looking at sending five thousand, mm. you know that's obviously considerable postage cost. Um, so what we've done this year, we've actually reprinted them um, two thousand units, and we're going to tier how we're sending them out. Um, and then we've done a secondary DM piece, which is a smaller postcard size um, apron menu, we're calling it. So we can love get bigger, bigger volume in sending that. I, I love the idea of having a team um, identify an industry, find the yeah. key players in that industry, and yes. then hitting them up um, with some old school direct marketing. Uh, yeah. nothing, nothing wrong with old school, nothing wrong with <laughs> offline. Um, yeah. Speaking of <laughs> offline, you have yeah. done some advertising. When you first told me about this, I got a little bit nervous. I think you advertised mm-hmm. in Time Out magazine, is that right? Mm-hmm. Which is like a is lifestyle magazine that is, mm-hmm. uh, is it just Melbourne and Sydney or <laughs> something like that? It's international actually, oh, Time it is. Out. Yeah, absolutely, and um, it has a huge following. As I'm not sure how long it's been around, but I'm sure it's at least twenty years. It's a you know well established. Really? Um, yeah, I just absolutely. see it in the airport lounge every now and then. So, yeah. what made you think that was a good environment? Because I'm guessing um, it wouldn't have been overly cheap. But you had a good outcome. Well, absolutely. Um, the reason that we partnered with them is they do have a very strong following and presence within hot, the hospitality market. Um, so they regularly host events where they have the Time Out Awards um, and they have different categories for, you know, bars and pubs and things like that where they really bring the hospitality community together. Um, so the association with them started more so sponsoring um, an award at, at these events because for us it was our, you know, our captured market mm-hmm. to be able to sponsor a certain category. And from that, our partnership's grown. Um, and like anything, you know, in a small business, you know, it is around doing things as cost effectively as possible. So with um, with Time Out, it has been a partnership and often collaboration. So we will, um, in some instances, do contra work for them. Yeah, right. Where we'll produce um, uniforms and um, merchandise for their events. And from that, we will then get advertising space. Um, and, yeah, I think I told you the story that that's actually how we picked up um, Freedom Furniture, which is yeah. obviously one of our... Um, um, amazing, you know, national, international, because they're also, we dress them in New Zealand as well, businesses. Um, the key stakeholder who was running the uniform rebrand was at the hairdressers and having her hair done and saw the ad in Time Out and thought to herself, why don't I know these guys? Wow. Um, because she'd been on the uniform hunt for around six months. It was part of her KPI and she just couldn't find the right company who could, you know, deliver what she wanted um, as a new vision for the uniforms for freedom. So, yeah, for us... Um, that's a massive win, Felicity. For, for listeners who don't know Freedom, not in Australia or New Zealand, I mean, that's a, it's a big, cool furniture retailer, massive distribution. Um, to be dressing their staff is a... That's a win. I'd almost argue it's probably a bigger win than Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> well, yeah, from a, um, a uniform rollout, absolutely. Of absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think for them, um, you know, prior to that, I think that their uniform hadn't kept up with the the image of the brand of what they've evolved into and their product offering. Um, and so I think the association with them, we're the perfect offering for them, you know, de- delivering the contemporary uniform, you know, for the staff selling their contemporary and modern products. So, um, Nailed yeah, it. absolutely. I just want to finish with... Uh, the P word, pricing, because I know it troubles many a small business owner, uh, mm-hmm. many a large business owner. And I don't know a lot about your industry, but I am looking at your the products on your website and mm-hmm. they're good and yeah. they look expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, the prices don't seem overly expensive. And mm-hmm. I add into that the fact that you've got some pretty significant overheads, 22 staff. You've got now mm-hmm. a retail presence in Brunswick Street. Um mm-hmm. 
how, how are you going about pricing? What am I missing? Well, look, to be honest, the reason that um, that we can offer such competitive pricing is because we're direct. So that's something that we really try and educate our customers on. If we were, we're technically a wholesale business selling to retail, um, direct to business. So really, if this product was sold by a distributor or a reseller, you know, it could potentially be 30, 40% extra upcharge. So the value for money that our customers are getting um, is part of our, you know, brand positioning. So mm-hmm. whilst, um, you know, we believe we're extremely well-priced, the uniform industry in general is extremely um, competitive on price. Um, you know, there's a very big range of quality products in the market. Um, so we sit, I would say, um, slightly higher than a lot of the um, mass market uniform brands but we are delivering a very premium um, retail quality product. Mm -hmm. So we do focus very um, strongly on our price. We want it to be affordable for our customers because at the end of the day, you know, they're buying multiple. It's not like they're just buying one apron or one shirt. They're buying multiple, um, you know, uniforms for their staff. And it, it does need to be affordable. You know, we have businesses, you know, in such like such a variety of sizes, you know, like we dress the cafe around the corner with four staff, but then we're also, you know, dressing like we just talked about Freedom or Hoyt Cinemas or Skybus Transport Company with, you know, hundreds of staff. So on both spectrums, price is always the number one consideration that um, that the customer is looking at. So for us, it's absolutely around um, being competitive on price, but producing a high quality product. So focusing on those two things, I think, has actually been the key to our success. And um, yeah, you know, obviously with the currency fluctuation, mm-hmm. um, pricing at some points, you know, it does get difficult. Yeah, but yeah. Um, the more that we're growing our range and growing our market and our quantities, we can get, you know, um, more competitive pricing with our factories. So we're just constantly monitoring that. Um, and yeah, keeping things affordable is is what is what we're focusing on. Felicity, I reckon Cargo Crew is a great story. Well done. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, you know, Jim. 14 years later, you know, you, you, you expect something. But I just think that's really interesting that four years ago you made that big shift into your own brand. Mm. It's paid off. It was a courageous move, I guess, at the time. But boy, Absolutely. oh boy, you know, um, I think I think more businesses need to look at their industries yes. and figure out where can we disrupt because I would say, and I, I don't know whether you'd agree, but most industries there's parts – of them that are tired and, and need well, to be challenged. Absolutely. And I guess just to that point, probably one thing that I think made us make the transition into developing our product, our own product range was because historically when we were in the space of dealing with the corporates and doing the bespoke work, the way that changed over that 10 years of dealing with marketing at one point, and then it shifted to dealing with procurement, you know, and procurement's mm. focus is all around, you know, um, you know, economy of scale, how can they source, you know, globally or from, you know, international portals. It was really about pushing out local suppliers. So we saw the writing on the wall and realised we need to either, um, you know, change our model of, of what we were doing or, you know, potentially you'd be dead in the water. And I think that's that's, yeah. you know, all small businesses need to be looking at the threats that are around them and then looking for opportunity for how how they can fill and, you know, totally. fill that gap and, and change their focus. You know, so for us it was using all that experience from, you know, the years of making the bespoke uniforms and then making that an offering that's opened up to everyone, not just the key corporates that we were working for. Yeah, love it. Well, listen, I hope one day I can give you the chance to to dress uh, a popular podcaster. I can't say who it is right now, but, look, it, that, that should just be around the corner. If you play your cards right, there might be a, there might be an apron in the mail for oh, you. Oh, stop it. Love your work, Felicity. Thanks for sharing. See you, Tim. Well, there you go, team. Felicity Rogers from the very cool, modern, not corporate, uniform supplier, Cargo Crew. Now, coming up shortly, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Felicity. Plus, I share some additional info about Cargo Crew that Felicity neglected to tell us. But first, here's a word from two businesses that want to help you build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Support for this show comes from Web Central, who know exactly what Google want. 
Verity Ma, their chief marketing officer, spells out how to please the world's biggest search engine. Every time Google comes back to your website and crawls it, they need to see that your website has been changed, updated with fresh content and new imagery, for example. Say if you're a restaurant, you want to update your menu every week and provide some specials that are on your website, give some customer testimonials. Now, that fresh new content is what Google's looking for. So if you just build your website and leave it for four years, which, let's be honest, is very common in the Australian market, then you're not actually optimising your website for your visitors or for your search engines like Google. Web Central, building and managing beautifully effective business websites that make the big G very happy. Check out webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo for exclusive listener offers. The Small Business Big Marketing Show is also grateful for the support of Aussie-owned business, designcrowd.com, the world's number one custom design marketplace where it's beautifully simple and cheap. I love cheap. To get a design you love, guaranteed. I asked founder Alec Lynch what problems Design Crowd solved for us small business owners. Buying design has traditionally been an expensive process, a slow process, and a risky process. Design Crowd's crowdsourcing solution fixes those problems. Designcrowd.com, a faster, cheaper, more creative way to get a custom logo, graphic, or print design for your business. For a special VIP offer that can save you up to $100 on your first design, visit designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo. Now, as I said, I discovered something after my interview with Felicity that she neglected to mention. I googled Cargo Crew and Inside Retailer had an interesting article which said staff uniform retailer Cargo Crew has signed a deal to outfit all staff in the world-renowned restaurant cla- restauranteur Klaus Meyer's brand new 5,000 square foot eatery in the Great Northern Food Hall in New York's Grand Central Station. How's that for a win, an international win for a little Melbourne-based company? Uh, this Klaus fellow, he's a, he's a two-star Michelin chef, got a couple of two-star Michelin restaurants, and now he's opening up the Great Northern Food Hall in New York and Cargo Crew are supplying all the uniforms. That's a big deal. Go Cargo Crew. Now... Here's my top three attention grabbers from my time with Felicity. Number one, briefing. Become proficient in how you brief creative people. Develop that skill. I think many small business owners undervalue creativity as it's often hard to measure its ROI. That's return on investment. However, when you have a logo you love or a corporate uniform that people constantly comment on, or a, re- or a website that really pops, then you'll understand the power of great design. And great design comes from great briefs. You want to understand more about that process, join the Small Business Big Marketing Forum and I'd be happy to help you out. Attention grabber number two, the crew review. I do love an old school marketing idea and I particularly love the fact that Felicity had her team identify key industries and the key players within them and mail them directly. Hey, bit of snail mail. That's a great job uh, you could outsource to a virtual assistant if you were liking the idea. Attention grabber number three, ease and simplicity. Everything about the Cargo Crew brand smells of ease and simplicity. Easy to buy products, a simple website to find your way around, an easy return policy. The key here is to remove as many blockages as you can to make it easy for people to buy from you. There you go. They were things that grabbed my attention. What grabbed yours? Love to know. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 334. Leave a comment in the show notes. Okay, listener feedback left on the Apple iTunes store, which I do love. This one is from I Love Direct Selling. That's the person's name. I know who this is. She says, sensational podcast, exclamation mark, five stars. Her name is Jen Usher. I know that. 
She's from Direct Selling Australia, and she's got a great podcast herself, Direct Selling Radio, if you're into that kind of thing. It's a really insightful um, view into the world of direct selling. Jen says, Tim's podcasts are not only fun to listen to, but very informative. Oh, yeah. I like that intersection, Jen. Entertainment and education. I live in the middle of those two. As a marketer, it's important for me to stay on top of trends and to get as many tips and tricks as I can. Extremely useful and relevant content. Thank you, Timbo. Keep them coming. I will, Jen, and you keep yours coming. I, um, I spoke at the Direct Selling Association's AGM recently, and uh, what a great group of people they were. In fact, uh, got booked for a couple of jobs as a result, uh, as a result of that. Uh, one in Australia, one in New Zealand in January. I love that. Anyway, I digress. Thanks, Jen, and everyone else. Head over to iTunes, leave a listener review, put in a marketing question in your website, and I'll give you an answer and a bit of publicity. That almost wraps up another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. I know, don't get too teary. There'll be another one next Tuesday and the Tuesday after that. And Tuesday after that. Hey, do you remember that chat I had with Paul Greenberg who made millions from starting Deals Direct, an, on, an online retail store back in the 90s? He's now head of the National Online Retailers Association and there is nothing that bloke doesn't know about integrating online retail into your business. I asked Paul what he would sell if he was starting an online business today. Well, okay, well, I'll start off a quick quote, get big, get niche, or get out. I've heard that bandied around, I'd go niche. So Deals Direct was an everything to all men. I wouldn't go there, it's bloody hard, it's expensive, it's hard yak. I'd find a niche product. So that's to answer the first part of your question. It would be a niche product with a strong Australian theme, but it would be a global product. So in other words, uh, Australia to the world. The what do you mean, of, uh, hold the second part, what do you mean with Australia Australian theme? So I think Brand Australia, and this is my passion, is an underestimated brand. I don't think we realise how much gravitas there is for our brands in China, Europe and the rest of the world. <laughs> that was actually a great interview. Paul goes on to explain how he would then set up such a business and how he would market it. I'd go as far to say that that episode is literally a business in a box if you really listen to what he's got to say. If you want to hear about the rest of that interview, not about it, if you want to hear the rest of the interview, plus hundreds more, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com where you can subscribe free on iTunes. Hey, I would love to hear uh, what you love about this show or don't love. I've got a thick skin. And I'm always open to improvement. So head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and and leave me a comment. Or maybe you want to join the forum, hey? Be sure to check out designcrowd.com forward slash Timbo because they're an ideal way to get any marketing touch points designed for that beautiful business of yours. Plus, there's an exclusive listener offer waiting for you that you can save up to $100 with on your first briefing. And remember, if you want your website to deliver results, then don't do it yourself. Check out Web Central's Do It For Me, a.k.a. Diffum website package over at webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo. If you love this show, tell someone else who could do with a bit of marketing love. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.